he loves basketball. And uh, I think that's the key for anything in the world, basketball and music. I think that that's a great connection for anyone in the world. <clears throat> but uh, uh, so happened, it has to be me. And uh, he happens to like the Chicago Bulls, and uh, he asked me to come over, and I say yes. But uh, with, uh, for some reason, with uh, North Korea, we have a, a big issue. And um, for me to go over there to see him as much as I have, I basically hang out with him all the time. He, we laugh, we sing karaoke, we do a lot of cool things together. And we ride horses, we hang out, we go skiing, and uh, we, we hardly ever talk politics. And that's the good thing about that. Every time I see him, he's always calm, he's always smiling, especially with his family. He's always uh, just, to me, he, you know, in person, without, you know, the things that's going on, on TV and, you know, potentially a war or something like that. But if you see him, like, just sit at a table, he's just like anybody else to me. I mean, he's always laughing, smiling, you know, talking to his people. That's it. To me, I think <clears throat> if, if, um, if the president even tries to reach out for Kim, I think it would be a great possibility things can happen. If Donald Trump, if they can sit down and have some type of mutual conversation. It don't have to be like a friendship conversation, just a mutual conversation saying, hi, uh, I would love to, you know, engage in some, in some words in politics and over the history of, of your country and my country, and just try to start some dialogue. I think that, uh, that'll open a, maybe, a, you know, the door just a little bit. Represent women in politics.